learning through the camera. You recording? Yeah. You got this? I got it. Okay. Sheet metal 101. We're going to go over the shear first and then some layout tools. I've got some layout tools laid out on this table. And we've got prison shank, also known as a uh, scratch all or a scribe, okay, more commonly. Hopefully you never have to refer to it as a prison shank. But basically it's just a sharpened piece of metal that will scratch an edge and it's a, it's a very definitive line to see. We use this over a Sharpie marker because Sharpies are two bucks a piece. They dry out if we leave the caps off. They're expensive. This thing will last forever. All you have to do is sharpen it on the belt sander. We've got a new scribe to use, okay? But we've also got, um, this is a scribe that has a set edge on it and we'll use this uh, as a layout tool. We'll demonstrate that in a little bit. Tape measure, <coughs> framing square, check if things are square and a gauge. Uh, we have a whole bunch of kind of usable scrap pieces of galvanized sheet metal here that we're going to shear up into sizes, usable sizes. And to start off, we have to know, can we shear this metal or not? First of all, how thick is it? And what is the maximum thickness that this thing can do? This is a gauge wheel, is what it's called, or a gauge indicator. And all these little slots in here show the different metal gauges, all the way from the smallest being um, 024 or uh, what would be about 26 gauge up to the largest gauge on here is 3 16 or what would be like 3 gauge. So we can measure this metal and just know that it's actually plenty thin for the sheet metal shear. It's, it's under 24 gauge, it's actually 26 gauge galvanized. Okay. So we know it's legit. Can you zoom in on this right here? Ethan. So this says 16 gauge mild steel or less or 20 gauge stainless steel or less. It's got to be thinner than that, otherwise the machine can't handle it. Next thing we want to look for is we always want to shear on a factory sheared edge or we want to line up on a sheared edge. And you can just kind of tell by how they're cut if they're cut straight. You can see that this side was like tin snipped off and it's not straight. We can fix that, but we have to start usually with a squared edge. So what I'm going to do is Hold the material against this edge. Doesn't seem that straight. And the most critical thing with this is this edge right here, this straight edge, is exactly 90 degrees to the blade or perpendicular. And everything we do in here with metal, we want to keep it square if we can. We want to keep right angles if possible. So we want to make sure that when we put a piece of metal in here to shear it, that we've got it tight to this edge. corner. That's why it's being nice. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shear a little bit off of this edge just so I know that this side is square. Um, main things to remember on the shear as far as safety goes. Number one, you're the only person that operates this. We have had one person get injured in the last couple of years and what happened was they were of small stature and they were shearing some really heavy material. So they themselves did not have enough weight to operate this, so they had somebody else jump on it while they were feeding material in, and they got one of their fingertips caught under this guard. And, you know, the guard, it's not that big of a deal with the guard, it smushed the fingertip. The blade would be much worse, that would be bad. That would be like, oh, I have a shorter finger now. And there's not a lot of, we can do about that. If you're operating yourself, it's never gonna happen, because if you feel your finger being smashed, hopefully you have the sense to stop pushing down on the lever. If you don't, then there's just not much we can do for you, okay? So operate it yourself. I'm going to slide this in a little bit. I want to make sure that it's tight along this edge. And then it's just foot operated. So I'm going to push down. And if I have to stand up on it, that's fine. And it should shoot off and strip on the back side. What I now know is that this edge right here is square. Okay? That's sharp. So if I put that back in and cut it to a certain length, I know that it's good. I can do one of two things. I can measure a distance on here and shear to a line. So I know that my starter size, anybody figure out their starter size for the ones we handed out in class? Eight by six. Eight by six, does anybody have anything different than six by eight? We shouldn't because they're all six by eight. Ha. Uh, we keep the same common starter size. So if we were gonna shear a strip out of this, we could either pick six inches and make a mark or we could go to eight inches and make a mark. If I look at this sheet and I say, well, which way is going to be more efficient? I know that I've got at least 24 inches. So if I divide that by eight, how many do I get? Three. If I divide it by six, how many do I get? Four. Four. So I could go either way with this as far as which one being more efficient. 
I'm gonna go the six inch strip like this. I'm gonna make a mark right here at six inches, and then I'm gonna slide it down, and I'll just make one more mark. I shouldn't have to do this, but I can kind of double check, make sure that I'm cutting it square. So I've got two scratch all marks. I'm gonna slide this in here, and Ethan, you're gonna to have to go over the top. It's a tough shot here. I have to turn on the light. Let's turn on the light. Can we turn it on while we're recording? No. Okay, go down uh, right here. The, the mark I made is right there. See if you can shoot through that opening. Uh, Can't see. Uh, go like this. Touch right there. And it'll change the exposure. There you go. We can see that mark right there. I'm going to slide that in until it lines up with the blade right there. Okay. So I'm going to line that mark up. You can see there's an upper blade that moves and a lower blade. I can check my other mark is right on. I'm at six inches. I want to make sure that I'm square here. Shoot that strip and let it drop on the back side. We have a tray back here that will catch it. So now I've got a six inch strip by 20 something over 24. The other way we can use this shear, which is faster than actually measuring and marking and more accurate, is this ruler is lined up even with the edge of the blade. So if I put this material through, make sure that I've got a good squared edge here. If I put this material all the way through to the 8 inch mark on the ruler, 8 inch mark, right there, and shear, I've now got one that's 6 by 8. Thank you. I can take that back, go to the 8 inch mark again. I've got two that are 6 by 8. It looks like I'm going to get one more out of there. And do not reach when it's this close to the blade. There's no need to reach around. That's what we have the tray there for. Just keep your hand on the front side, shear it off. And I've got three that are six by eight, and they should be pretty much the same size. Okay, so those are my starters. When you're done with the shear, go around back, grab your scrap material out of here. If it's really small like this, then we can throw it in the big blue bin over here. The steel recycling bin. Rules, uh, keeping the work area clean, so if you're done, put your sheet metal away. Uh, materials are kind of automatically clamped by this spring-loaded device. And again, only one person using this. You want to keep your hands back and clear from this guard. The blade's another two inches under there, but the guard would obviously be something you could be concerned about. Other than that, it's like a giant scissors. It's a foot-operated scissors, okay? All right, um, and scene.